I'm April Yvonne Garrett, and this is Amplify Baltimore. Much has been made as of late about the education of boys. Today we visit three schools, the Gilman School, St. Ignatius Loyola Academy, and the Blueford Drew Jemison STEM Academy, who are committed to enhancing excellence in boys through this educational approach. I'm happy to be on the beautiful campus of the Gilman School for the first time with its headmaster, John Schmick. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for coming here to see us. How is it that a school formed by a woman became the gold standard in educating boys in Baltimore? Well, I think the key to that question uh, is the fact that the woman was a mother, mm. uh, Ann Galbraith Carey, and she was looking around for a school for her son but did not want her son to go away uh, which was uh, quite often what happened. That was a model back in the day. You sent your kids away. Right. right. Uh, and so she went around and looked at different schools, primarily in the Northeast, in the, in the boarding schools. Sure. And she came back with the idea of adapting the day of the boarding school uh, into a, a country day school. And so the idea was that the boys would come to school, they'd have rigorous academics, they'd have a hot lunch, mm -hmm. they'd have more academics, and they'd have a period of athletics, and then they would go home. So it combined the best of both worlds, the academic rigor of a boarding school plus the nurturing of the home. And that was the basis for Gilman right. starting as a first country day school for boys. Tell us about the young men you educate and how that population has changed over time. What are the demographics? Um, what are you finding that they're bringing to the institution now that's a little bit different than what your traditional student looked like 20 years ago? Well, one thing we uh, have students from all over the Baltimore metropolitan area, and it's a ter absolutely phenomenal group of boys. We have 1,022 students, um, K through 12, and they are um, f from all over and with all sorts of different skills and talents that they bring to us. Uh, we have uh, great scholars, we have great artists, great um, musicians, uh, great athletes. It's just a wonderful bunch of boys. Um, demographically, uh, we break it down into three divisions, lower, middle, and an upper school, uh, grades K through 5 in the lower school, 6 through 8 in the middle school, and 9 through 12 in the upper school. Uh, we are college prep, and 100% uh, of our boys go on to college. John, tell us how you supplement the all-male environment by coordinating with the female schools in the area. Well, we have been very fortunate. For the last 30-some years, we've been able to coordinate with Roland Park Country School and the Bryn Mawr School. Mm. We actually have bridges that join the two campuses, one yeah. over Northern Parkway and one over Roland Avenue. Okay. And the coordination starts uh, in the ninth grade, uh, and it starts with what we call the unique languages, and those are languages that are taught only on one campus. Okay. Uh, so for instance, if somebody wants to take German, they would go to Bryn Mawr. If somebody wants to take Chinese, Arabic, or Russian, they would go to Roland Park, Greek and Latin are taught here, and all three schools teach French and Spanish. Okay. Uh, but when we get into the junior year, then each boy and each girl will take one course, either history or English, on another campus. Uh, and then f when we get to the senior year, uh, the, co uh, the coordination really, uh, most courses are coordinated, so that the students have a choice of 30 English classes yeah. uh, senior year, and it, it really becomes almost like a small liberal arts college. So in a way, you are still maintaining the ethos of a single sex education, but you're allowing them to have the experience of learning that's, in a co-education. That's, it's, that's exactly right. Okay. Each school maintains its own identity as a single sex institution, mm. but they have the benefit mm -hmm. of the coordination at a time when they're intellectually ready and uh, excited about it. You are an alum of the Gilman School, correct? Correct. Class of 67. Absolutely. And your son is as well. Right. He graduated in the class of 1997. So you have a legacy at this institution. Tell us about the alums from the Gilman School, but more importantly, the ones who've made contributions to Baltimore. Well, I think uh, the first people that come to mind would be uh, William and Frank Carey. Uh, Mr. Carey, they're W.P. Carey and Company, and uh, I think everybody's pretty much aware of the the tremendous support they've given to Baltimore institutions, uh, all sorts of different institutions. I would also point to Mark Fetting, mm -hmm. uh, CEO of Leg Mason and Company, okay. uh, Doug and Eric Becker, who started Sylvan Learning um, Centers and are now very much involved in uh, education. Um, but we also have a number of alums that you might not know that are given back to Baltimore. I think of a fellow named Cheo Hurley, 
Who I, is, I, Jay is a friend. Okay, well, <laughs> so I do know. Right? I, I, think, I think the work he's doing in Northeast Absolutely. Baltimore Carter is just terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, we have boys, I think of a young boy, John Williams, who's in the Peace Corps. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Hal Turner and Joseph Valentine White, who are in Teach for America. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a real uh, uh, history of giving back. Uh, we have a young man, Peter Daniker, the class of 1991 in New York, mm -hmm. who has started uh, very uh, active in the Harlem Dream School and, mm -hmm. and starting that project. Uh, so it's really been, uh, you know, we have, um, certainly we have to point to Congressman John Sarbanes, sure. to uh, County Executive Kevin Kamenitz and uh, ex-Governor Robert Ehrlich, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who have been giving back. And if you, you go further back, you can look at Frank DeFord, mm -hmm. um, probably I think the preeminent sports writer uh, of the of the century, mm -hmm. we're close to it, and then of course Walter Lord, right. who was a proud graduate as well. Thank you so much for sharing the history and traditions of the Gilman School with us today, and I hope people were excited about what they learned. Well, thank you very much, April, and thank you so much for coming on to campus. It's been a pleasure having you with us today. Thanks. And more about Gilman when we return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gilman has a history of wonderful graduates, and we are now talking with a student, Matt Randolph, who is a senior here at the school. Matt, thanks for being with us. No problem. How are you? I'm great. So you are a senior here. Yes, I'm a senior right now. At Gilman, mm -hmm. and you're enjoying your time here. I am. I am. Tell us how you found out about Gilman. I understand that you have a sibling that attended the school. Yeah. My, my brother actually uh, went to Gilman mm -hmm. um, before I was even here. I was at a public school um, in Towson. And I thought, you know, about attending a private school. My parents thought the best decision, decision would, be, would be for me to follow uh, my brother um, at Gilman. So you had all this information from your brother. Right. What did you think it would be like attending Gilman? Well, I didn't know what to expect. Um, my parents said it was a good school, mm -hmm. but I knew it was going to be really difficult, so I was kind of scared and intimidated. Um, but as I got here, it was a very easy transition, and I felt that it wasn't that big of a deal, you know, mm -hmm. going from a public school to a private school wasn't that stressful. It felt very you know, natural. What is it about being a Gilman student that sets you apart from everyone else? Um, I think being a part of uh, Gilman, you definitely feel you have a sense of community. I mean, I think at other schools you can kind of go home and forget about school, but at Gilman you're here for, for so much time. Mm -hmm. and you feel like you've invested so much into it in the community that you feel like it's always with you. You always feel like you're part of the Gilman community. Matt, thank you so much for sharing your Gilman experience with us today and encouraging others to look at single sex options for boys in secondary education. We wish you the best because you're a senior and you're on your way to college and we do hope you consider Kenyon College and thank you. you're applying. Thanks. Next, we'll travel to St. Ignatius Loyola School in downtown Baltimore. <laughs> Want to know what it's like to be a student here at St. Ignatius Loyola? Well, we're going to talk to one right now. He's an eighth grader from the Lexington Terrace, and his name is Nicholas Villard. Nicholas, thanks for being with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. How did you end up at an all-boys school? Well, my mother, she didn't want me to go to an average public school, so she looked around to find any other possible choice, and she found St. Ignatius. What did you think of coming here? Did you want to come here? Was it on your radar? At first, it was kind of awkward because it was an all-boys school, but after being here for three years, it's kind of exciting, and we did do a lot of great things. What's different about your educational experience as opposed to your friends who go to other public schools? Well, here is more challenging. We get out at a later time. I think the later time helps a lot. Plus, we're in during most of the year, so we kind of get our education going on. We also spend some time at Blue Ridge. Tell me a little bit about your Blue Ridge experience. So Blue Ridge, we go on two weeks vacation with us and our friends. Is we day we day and night, and we have great catering, and we just got all our boys' experience. When you talk to your other friends who are going to other types of schools, what are they saying to you? Are they saying, "Oh, you go to school too long. You have to do all these required activities in the summertime," or are they a little bit jealous of your experience? Yes, that's exactly what they say. <laughs> They're always they say, "Why do you have to wear a tie?" Why you have to dress up? Why you have to come to school so? Why you go to school so early? Why you leave so late? But actually, it's kind of fun. What do you think sets you apart from other students your age because of the experience you're gaining here? I think it gets us ready for high school and college. Since most of Baltimore City public schools, we sometimes students that are capable of doing better are a little bit behind. Mm. But here, it gets a chance the student that wants to excel can excel. What do you hope to do after you graduate? After I graduate, I'd like to go to Georgetown Preparatory. It's a uh, college-prepared high school, 
And after that, I wanted to go to Stanford and become an architect. You are a wonderful example of why single sex education for boys is so successful in Baltimore. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us today. Thank you, it was a pleasure meeting you too. Next, we'll talk with an alumnus of the school. In its short history, the St. Ignatius Loyola Academy has produced incredible results. We are standing here with the evidence of that. 2000 graduate, Enosh Atenikon. Enosh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. What was so special about your experience here at St. Ignatius Loyola? Uh, well, I actually had a brother that went here before me. Huh. So I had some experience with the school. Um, but for me, it was a chance to, to really get some structure in my life. Um, it provided me with organization and structure and a chance to do something different than what other kids were doing. Um, but for me, it was a chance to really build a bond with other boys my age. Uh -huh. So we became kind of like a family. That's nice. After completing your studies here, you attended another prestigious all-boys institution. Tell us about your experience there. After I attended St. Ignatius, I went to the Gilman School, uh -huh. uh, which is also, like you said, uh, single-sex education. Uh -huh. uh, and that school just challenged me even more. And the things I learned here at St. Ignatius definitely helped me to, to compete over there. After you graduated from Gilman, you attended University of Maryland College Park, but you're also working in the Baltimore area. Tell us why you returned to Baltimore and what you're doing now. Yes, after the University of Maryland, I was fortunate enough to um, learn about a program for Consolidated Graphics and their Leadership Development Program. Huh. And uh, they actually have a couple printing plants here in Baltimore. Okay. Uh, so I work for a company, PCA, up in Timonium, Maryland. Uh -huh. And I recently just finished the program, it's a three year program just finished in August uh -huh. and I, right now I'm a program manager and it was great to be able to come back here in Baltimore and work uh, that way I can still see my mom still see my family and I uh, still come back here and, and help out. Why would you tell others that this type of single sex education environment is important? I would tell others it's a chance to really uh, challenge yourself. Um, when you're in other schools you can easily get distracted um, but here you really have to put your best foot forward and everybody's reaching for the same goal. So there's less distractions and it really helps you shine and, and see what areas you're really great at. What did you value most about your experience here at St. Ignatius? It's just one big family. Um, from beginning to now, everybody still comes back. I love all the alumni gatherings. Uh, new people have come in, old people have left, but people always come back. Well, I'm so glad you got to share your experiences with us. We're very proud of your successes and you clearly have amplified Baltimore with all you're doing, and we're glad to have you back. That's really a wonderful and rare opportunity for you to give back to the city. So thank you so much for sharing your experience with us today, and thank you for amplifying Baltimore. Thank you. We're here with parent of an eighth grader and graduate of the Academy, Cynthia Jaramoji. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Cynthia, why did you choose St. Ignatius Loyola to educate your sons? I was driving by one day and just happened to see the school and just my cousin mentioned it to me. So I came to the open house and um, I chose the Academy just based on the open house. The staff, the passion, the dedication that they showed when I first met them made me pursue my kids' education here. How did being educated in an all-male environment make a difference for your sons? Well, being a single mom of two young boys, I thought that it would be important for them to be able to focus on what's important about them, what's unique about them as young boys. And the, the, the gentlemen, especially the male role models of this school are just outstanding. So I really appreciated how the men of this school took my boys under their wing and really mentored them. What kind of changes have you seen in your sons, both the graduate and the current student, as a result of this education? Uh, my, my son, who's a graduate, he was very shy, very withdrawn. His first experience at two weeks of, of being away from home was really nervous for me. Uh -huh. But he came back a young man, uh -huh. very independent, very reliable. Uh, the, the experience just changed him, and I see a lot of maturity and growth in my youngest one as well. Cynthia, tell us what happened with your oldest son as a result of graduating from this school. Well, my oldest son was able to go in and pursue a high school education at Crystal Ray Jesuit High School in Baltimore City as well, and he's doing wonderful there. How did the institution support your son after he graduated? Well, the graduate uh, support system here is wonderful. They hold a lot of uh, academic resources in reference to pre-SAT testing uh, mm. classes. They have a lot of uh, functions in reference to barbecues where all the alumni come together with mm -hmm. the families. And they have a lot of, they, they're having a few college trips this, this next month or so uh, to Villanova University and Towson and just different places where they're taking young men, preparing them for college. So the life of the 
student here at the academy extends beyond graduation. They really do try to keep them connected to the young people here and to the staff. It extends beyond uh, this school, beyond high school, beyond college. They keep in contact with their graduates from the time they meet them and throughout their lives. So why would you recommend this particular institution to any parent that's raising a boy in Baltimore City? The environment. I have never met or seen or witnessed such a dedicated, passionate group of staff. They really pour everything they have into these young boys to make them uh, young men for, the, for Baltimore City. Well, thank you so much for sharing why single-sex male education is important from a parent's perspective and also being a very dedicated parent. It's so important that our school system has strong parents that are committed to education as well. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you. In downtown Baltimore, St. Ignatius Loyola Academy provides a unique opportunity for educating the boys of Baltimore. I stand here today with its president, John Ciccone. John, thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. John, how did you come to this school? This is uh, just an amazing institution for boys in Baltimore and provides a great high school preparation for them to go on and be very successful. You worked in the Baltimore City Public School System before you took on the position as president? I, I have in the past, yes. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. What is the mission of the St. Ignatius Loyola Academy? We were um, founded in 1993 as a tuition-free Jesuit middle school for boys mm -hmm. from low-income families in Baltimore. And our goal is to prepare them for high school, college preparatory high school. And over our entire 18 years of operating, we have a 98% high school uh, graduation rate. John, how old is the school? How many students are enrolled and what grade? do you educate? We were founded in 1993, so we're just about 20 years You're old 20 now. 20 years old. We're, we're, we've been around for a while. Oh my goodness. We've been around for a while. And we uh, currently enroll 70 students in grades 6, 7, and 8. You've embraced a unique extended day and 11 month curriculum. Tell us how that came about and the efficacy of it. Well, we, we have a lot of work to do. Yeah. And, and we have students who come into the school uh, grade levels behind in reading and math skills, and they leave us above grade level in reading mm. and math skills. So it gives us plenty of time for rigorous classes, activities, sports, study time. And then also uh, the summer component, uh, you know, we stop the summer learning loss that mm. usually takes place over yes. the three months of a summer break that's, that's a traditional. That's problem, yeah. And so we, we eliminate all those barriers to advancing and achieving. Tell us a little bit about this exciting thing that you do during the summer that the boys seem to really enjoy. Two, two weeks in the summer, we take all of our students and our faculty to a summer camp, uh, overnight summer camp, for a full two weeks that's uh, just over um, the Maryland line in Pennsylvania. That's exciting. And they spend two full weeks there having fun. This is a very expensive endeavor. How do you fund a tuition-free education for all of the boys who attend this school? Uh, we rely on many very generous donors. Mm. Uh, we receive no government or archdiocesan funding. Really? And so nearly our entire budget is raised every year by charitable giving. We're able to find a sponsor uh, who's an individual or a family that will sponsor a student here, and, and we have every one of our students sponsored. And then we have a number of uh, donors to our annual fund who are very generous to make this program operate. John, share with us the positive outcomes of this educational approach. Well, in, in a city where about half of the males graduate from high school and receive yes. a high school diploma, mm. we have uh, an 18-year uh, rate of 98% of our students having a high school diploma. That's outstanding. And, and then we don't just leave them at the end of that process. We actually work with them while they go through college and have graduate support that provides additional support. And that's one of the signature features of, of what we do to make sure that our students become successful and become like the young man that you uh, interviewed earlier today who's one of our graduates. John, you guys have done an incredible job here based on the interviews that I've done with other people today. Tell us what your plans for the future are. We'd love to be able to uh, serve more students and we'd love to keep doing what we do, but only do it better. Well, I think you're off to a wonderful start. I've seen evidence of that all day today, and I'm excited to share your vision with the people of Baltimore. Great, thank you. The old Madison Square Elementary School is now the new home of the Blueford Drew Jemison STEM Academy. Today I am with R. Anthony Mills, Vice Chairman of their Board of Directors and Acting Chief Financial Officer, and Principal Kelvin Bridgers. Thank you so much for being with us today. Glad to be with you. Thank you for having us. So Mills, tell us where the name Blue for Drew Jemison came from. Blue for Drew Jemison STEM Academy comes from three prominent African Americans. Guy Bluford, first African American astronaut. Uh, Dr. Charles Drew, of course, who uh, did the groundwork to, for what we now know as the blood bank. And Dr. Mae Jemison, 
first African-American woman in space. Now, why did you choose these three individuals as the founding names of this particular institution? What were you hoping that their witness would inspire for your young people? Well, the founders of the school thought it was important to ensure that the name represented the focus, which is STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And these were the three individuals that they thought exemplified that goal. What is your mission and why did you choose a STEM curriculum for educating boys? So the mission of this school is to focus on preparing boys for secondary and post-secondary education. Mm -hmm. uh, the STEM curriculum because as we move forward in this global economy, we wanted to ensure that the young men are prepared for fi the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. How old is your school? How many students are you educating on your two campuses and what are the grade levels? So the school was founded in 2006. We're educating between the two campuses close to 900 boys. We have 6th through 8th grade at the East Campus and currently 6th through 10 at the West Campus and we'll be filling in for the next two years until we reach the 12th grade. Why are there two campuses? Why did you decide in a, in a place where we're moving to having 6th through 12 education? Why are you sticking with a middle school model that's separate from a high school model? Well, this East Campus is our flagship campus and is really the home of Blueford Drew Jemison. But we have two campuses because we had an opportunity to move into a format that would allow us to do 6 through 12 to see if we could get those young men moving to proficient and advanced levels all the way through the 12th grade and then push them to the higher achieving colleges, Ivy League colleges in the country. Why is your school dedicated to only educating boys? Well, you know, when you look at the, uh, the data from the state of Maryland in terms of the number of children that are incarcerated, mm. uh, particularly in the Baltimore City uh, area, mm -hmm. um, it is the boys, uh, primarily African American boys between the ages of uh, 11 and 17. Sure. Uh, so when you look at this traditional middle school for boys, we want to look at uh, what group primarily needs more of a focus in academic to refocus uh, out of incarceration and into education. Right. And here in East Baltimore, that's a particular concern, correct? Definitely. Um, this particular area in East Baltimore uh, is considered a high crime area. Mm -hmm. um, however, we found that there are some very brilliant young men uh, in this area. Sure. One of the things we wanted to do is to really encapsulate the brilliance that we really know exists in our young men. Uh, that's the reason for this institution and some of the things that we do, not only uh, during the school day, but one of the reasons why we have an extended program as well that offer uh, a variety of different uh, type of extracurricular activities and uh -huh. cultural activities for the young men as well. Tell me about some of the positive outcomes you've seen from the work you're committed to here. Well, it's a team effort, you know. It takes a, a group of people who are founders, you know, it takes a, a board of directors that's committed to, uh, you know, providing the resources to put these programs together and, of course, a uh, tremendous uh, uh, administrative team, mm -hmm. teachers, parents, et cetera, et cetera, and community stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, as a part of this process. But we are very proud that at least 60% of our boys are better are attending citywide programs that's or fantastic. private uh, institutions as well uh, throughout the city of Baltimore. Um, you know, we feel good about the fact that culturally we've been able to uh, cut back on the number of suspensions that have been occurring mm. inside of our school mm -hmm. uh, and we continue to uh, uh, get larger percentages of parent participation. Back to school night recently we had 153 parents to show up for 320 boys. That's so uh, the process is going to take time mm -hmm. uh, and we know that it's not anything that happens overnight mm -hmm. but I think that uh, Blueford is heading in the right direction thus far. Sounds like it. What are your future goals? Well you know uh, we, we are proud of the strides that we've made. Uh, we are realistic that we do have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the ultimate goal is for every boy that attends this institution is to be uh, proficient or advanced in standardized testing. Mm. Uh, and that is the task, uh, not only here at Blueford, but of course all across America. So ultimately, uh, being able to provide the proper resources and uh, to put the right personnel, professional development, et cetera, that we need in order to uh, put our teachers in position to move these children academically. And Mills, tell us how the board of directors will help him achieve that goal. Well, it's twofold. What we'll do from the governance side is we'll take the data from the schools analyze it and really come up with a model on how do you educate boys mm -hmm. uh, and not just boys but urban boys what's mm -hmm. the best way to educate them mm -hmm. and then from that once we believe we have a solid plan then we'll take that and in terms of a business model we look at expansion looking at going from pre-k through five looking at expanding outside of baltimore to share what we've learned to share our data results and then move this model across the country 
Why do you think it's important for parents to consider supporting single sets education options for their children? Uh, I, th I think the major component is uh, the personal growth and development of individuals. Hmm. Um, obviously, uh, with the condition of America, the conditions of a lot of single parent households, hmm. particularly African American boys, many of them do not have a, uh, a so-called standard nucleus hmm. family, and uh, we hoping we're hoping that here at Bluefoot, with the structures that we have in place. Uh, strong male presence as well as other programs that you know include uh, male mentoring and other types of programs uh, manhood training programs to help the young men to understand who they are what their responsibilities are for themselves for their families and hopefully for their future families well thank you so much for sharing with us today the importance of single sex education and the importance of a stem curriculum when it comes to educating boys in baltimore thank you for having us and next, we will talk with a Blue for Drew Jemison scholar about his experiences here at the Academy. The Blue for Drew Jemison STEM Academy is an institution filled with scholars. We're here with one of them today, Deja Mack, a seventh grader. Deja, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. What brought you to an all boys middle school? I heard of their curriculum and how challenging it was, so I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could come up to the test. How did you end up at an all-boys school? My friends went here before me, and so they said, Deja, you believe you're smart enough, so I decided to come here and see the curriculum and how it challenged me and my friends. And so I started in sixth grade, the middle of the school year. They gave me tests, MSA pre-tests, and more things to challenge me to see what grade level, if I belonged in the sixth grade, if I belonged in different class and different setting, advanced placement or such uh -huh. others. And so when I got 100 on the test, which was meant for an eighth grade test, they were surprised, so they put me in 601, which is advanced placement. Okay. So the more tests I got, the more, 85, the more 85s and 95s I've gotten and a hundreds. Well, you're pretty smart then. Yes, ma'am. So this is a curriculum that really meets your needs. Yes. So Deja, what did you think attending Bluefoot would be like? I thought the stuff was gonna be like sixth grade work like I would imagine, like I see in workbooks, a little fractions, a little decimal places. But this stuff, it jumps to the stuff specific to your needs instead of some what the teacher thinks you need. They come to you and ask you, what do you know and what do you believe, what do you believe you need help with? What do you like the most about attending the school? Well, I mostly like being with my friends and seeing what we can do or what we can accomplish when we work, when we do our work and when we work, when we work together. You like the community? What is it about the community that pulls you in? Uh, the thing about the community that pulls me in is probably the atmosphere around here, how people are peaceful and I can walk to my classroom without someone pushing into me or bumping into me. Ah. What is it about being a Bluefoot Scholar that sets you apart from the rest? I believe that sets me apart from the rest is that I can challenge myself while people are still left behind mm. and I can challenge myself and do work that other people believe they can do but actually can't do. So the $50,000 question, where do you want to attend high school? I want to go to Gilman. I want to get an internship to Gilman so I can go there. Why do you want to go to another all-boys high school? Because with all-boys schools, I can focus on my work in an all-boys community so I don't have distractions. Deja, would you want all of your male friends to attend this school? I think it would be a great decision for them to come here because the curriculum is not, it's challenging, but it's not challenging where you want to drop out on the first day. Well, Deja, you just presented us with a wonderful reason why people should consider same-sex male education in Baltimore. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us. Thank you for having me. We hope these three schools provided you with insights when considering all boys' education in Baltimore. <laughs> Remember, we the people of Baltimore possess all we need to make our city thrive. With every thought, word, and action, each of us has the power to create the city we want. With this power, I hope you will always choose to amplify Baltimore. Oh.